something when you were younger that you're really embarrassed about now? Uh, for some of you, it might have been maybe irritating your parents over something. It might have been that one class presentation that really just didn't go well. For me, it was my Thomas and Friends Narrators Ranked video that I did like three years ago. That is probably the worst thing I've ever made. And for some reason, is like one of the highest viewed things on my channel. And there's a narrator whom I think most Thomas fans don't really enjoy. And I can kind of understand why. Like, he can be a little nasally and he kind of, some some of his voices are a little annoying. All right, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. Got that out. Okay. Um, so, in uh, light of that, I decided that since I've been kind of taking a, a new approach to YouTube, uh, as far as coming back and doing just trying new things I figured now is a good a time as any to redo that narrators ranked video um, So I have sitting in front of me on my laptop um, uh, All the different Thomas narrators of the TV show both uh, US and UK dub nothing international um, I'm gonna put it in the background somewhere at some point um, So basically the tiers are amazing good mediocre slash average or just bad or, or terrible so it's like Amazing, good, mediocre, average, bad, terrible. And I'm gonna rank them and talk about them. So, let's get into it. So, starting off, uh, in the terrible tier, we're gonna stick Joseph May and John Hassler. Uh, as Thomas actors, like voice actors for Thomas, the character himself, fine. I have no issue with these two as the actors for Thomas. The problem is, Thomas is not the narrator. And it's not even just that, oh, I don't like change, I don't like, no, like, just Thomas sounds ear grating as the narrator. He is supposed to be, like, a younger type character with a younger voice to inflect that. So if you just play his more kind of pitchy voice over and over, d detailing every single plot thing that's happening, it's absolutely grating and, 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 and just horrible to listen to. And I cannot stand it. So... Yeah, uh, I, I, I really don't uh, enjoy John Hassler or Joseph May. Um, great voice actors for Thomas, and I really respect what they brought to that role, but they really should not have been made uh, Thomas voice actors, or uh, Thomas narrators, of course they're Thomas voice actors, not Thomas narrators. So they're going in the terrible tier. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Um, let's go with Michael Angelus. Uh, we're sticking him, and this is going to piss off some people, in the mediocre average tier. I think Michael Angelus, what he did for the first kind of five seasons, five, six seasons of Thomas was great. The problem is the bulk of his tenure on Thomas is that season seven to 16 period, and it's the longest, um, and that's, and he sounds just terrible throughout all of that. Like, yeah, he sounds great in those first few seasons, but it's only those first few seasons. He just sounds bored in all of the other ones. Like, season seven, everyone makes fun of it. It's like, you're getting new coaches and so much to shrink it. Like, I like what he's going for. He embodies what I view in terms of Thomas narrators as, like, the quintessential sort of, like, um, you know, English narrator, deeper voice, kind of storybook vibe. But he's just, like, he, he puts me to sleep. Um, I don't, I, I mean, that's not to say I don't enjoy him every now and again, uh, when I was younger, uh, New Friends for Thomas was one of the only season seven, um, tapes I had, so, you know, uh, good stuff as far as that's concerned, but, uh, in general, just not a very good Thomas narrator, but, but, but by, by no means a bad one, um, I really respect him and what he did for the show, so, rip in peace, Michael Angelus. All right, so, moving on, we have... Uh, let's see. Let's do Alec Baldwin. I'm putting Alec Baldwin in the good tier. Um, he really fell off in season six, but in season five, that man was on a roll. Um, he was just like doing really, really good. He really brought the sort of cinematic attitude to season five, uh, and he kind of elevated it. And uh, it was just a really good uh, performance. I really liked what he did with characters like Gordon. And he kind of just made those, his inflections and his voices, they really kind of brought the characters forward more. And we'll see that more with some of the other narrators I'll talk about. But he was just a really, really good narrator. And I, I'm, I'm personally, I'm biased. I like season five. So really good. Season six kind of fell off, but still has some really good performances there. He's quite kind of tired in season six. He doesn't have as much energy, but I really like what he did in that season. So there's that kind of thing to consider. Um, so we have Alec Baldwin there. Now, uh, Mark Morahan? Yeah, Mark Morahan. Let's talk about him. I'm going to put Mark Morahan. This is going to also anger some people. Um, I'm putting him um, in the good tier. I'm not sure what the consensus on Mark Morahan is. I've heard it's not 
I mean, I, I, I've heard a, a, a bit of different stuff about him. Personally, I really like what he did with the uh, the new the newer seasons of Thomas. With the Renaissance um, uh, specifically, he really brought um, kind of that older idea of Thomas, where it's like the kind of deeper voices in the storybook vibe. He brought that back um, through both his narration style and just his own his own voice. And I really, really like it. I wasn't too sure about him at first. Um, I remember my first exposure to him was the Santa's Little Engine uh, DVD. I'm just looking at it on my shelf up here. I can't grab it quickly. And the Santa's Little Engine. And that was, I, I, I was iffy about him at first. I was like, eh, I don't really know about him. But as the seasons went on, particularly uh, through like season 18 into Tale of the Brave and then 19 and Legend of the Lost Treasure, and especially The Adventure Begins, he really kind of came into his own and really kind of did his own thing, but very much brought Thomas back to its roots with his style and his own voice. So I really respect Mark, Mark Morahan and I really like what he did with uh, his performance. Uh, let's see, who else we got here now? Uh, Pierce Brosnan, Mr. James Bond. Um, side note, to this day, I still have yet to see any James Bond movies, so I'm not gonna comment- Okay, uh, quick side note, I got so preoccupied talking about the James Bond thing, I forgot to say where I ranked him, so, mediocre tier. On that. But as far as his performance in The Great Discovery, I liked it. I thought it was really good. And it would have been interesting to see what he would have done, um, in the actual show, um, going forward, because he was, of course, supposed to narrate from, uh, season, uh, I think it was season 10, season, season 11, 12, season 12 onwards, something like that, I think it was season 12 onwards, yeah. The problem was, I forget what the problem was, actually, I'm not sure, oh yeah, it was something to do with CGI, he didn't want to be a part of it, anyway, the point is, uh, he didn't continue, and I, I, I do like what he did in The Great Discovery, and he does kind of do what, um, Mark Morahan was kind of trying to do, bringing it back to that older kind of English storybook vibe, but the problem with Brosnan is he talks so slow and so quietly, and Thomas is on the bridge and it's about to collapse, and I'm going to talk like this! And sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's really good. Um, but sometimes it's like I'm falling asleep listening to this man. And that's not to say that it's even necessarily really his fault, because if you watch the behind the scenes, he talks about how um, he was trying to uh, tell the story as if he was reading it to his kids, which is a really good philosophy for tell being a Thomas narrator. Like, I really respect the hell out of that. But for a, what's supposed to be one of the most action-packed movies of the Thomas model era, um, it just didn't really work for me. Um, it's not to say he's bad, though. That's why I'm putting him in the mediocre average tier next to Angelus. He's a really good uh, narrator in terms of, like, certain scenes, others he's just not. Overall, not a bad dude by any means. Um, so let's go down here. Who do we got now? Uh, Michael Brandon. We're gonna put Brandon, and this is also going to anger some, this might anger a lot of people. We're gonna put him in the good tier, and I'm going to explain why before the internet mob comes to, uh, rip my head off. So Brandon, um, first of all, it's nostalgia. Brandon was the uh, the first narrator that I was exposed to as a little kid. Um, the season sort of eight to 12 era was like my first sort of exposure, like the, the, the early hit era was the, my first exposure to Thomas. So I was around his narration a lot. When I heard Brandon's voice, I was like, oh, hey, it's time for Thomas. So nostalgia plays a big factor. But in general, I just think he's a really good narrator for the US dub. The problem is they have him over narrate. He, they, they have him, they'll be like, oh, um, Thomas was going along the line. He felt good today. Uh, he was smiling. He, like, he, they, they just, they over narrate. They may have him over narrate. And so his voice gets on people's nerves because of that. And his character voices are not great, but some of them are really good. I love his voice for Gordon. I mean, most narrators do a pretty good Gordon voice, but his voice for Gordon is great. Narragage Engines, little off, but the point is, if it wasn't for kind of what the studio had mandated in some of his voices, I don't think people would have such a bad um, view of Brandon. Yeah, it's biased, but I don't really care. It's my tier list. So, yeah. Um, okay, so two left if you've been paying attention. So let's talk about the man, the myth, the legend, uh, George Carlin. We're going to put him in the amazing tier. And I am putting him there because he's amazing. Uh, George Carlin, I like his philosophy for Thomas and his sort of idea where he wanted to show a less cynical side of himself and he really liked the fact that the morals weren't kind of being jammed down the kids' throats. He did, he liked what Thomas represented. So, um, with George Carlin, uh, I, I really like his character voices. One thing that Alec Baldwin doesn't do that kind of disappointed me as I kind of started rewatching these seasons, 
he doesn't do character voices or accents nearly as often as Carlin. Carlin gave such great voices to characters like Smudger, um, George, accents to Donald and Douglas. Um, he just, he did so much in terms of, like, bringing these characters to life that a, a lot of other narrators simply didn't or couldn't do or what the issue was, I'm not sure, but he really did a lot for, um, the Thomas characters and in terms of their personality. So I really, really enjoy Carlin. Um, but my number one of all time that I'm putting in the amazing tier is, of course, Ringo Starr. And it's not just because I'm a Beatles fan. Um, it's just because I think he's a really good narrator and you know i talk about the sort of quintessentials of thomas narration where you have like the kind of the storybook vibe and the deeper english voice and i think ringo Starr really um he embodies that perfectly and he kind of comes out of that time of those first two early seasons where it's sort of the purest iteration of thomas um on the silver on the, the small screen as possible so i think um, you know, whether it's biased in terms of like what I personally like or whether, um, you know, it's what he brings. I, I'm not really sure, but I just, for me, Ringo is just the quintessential Thomas narrator. A lot of people will say it's George Carlin and there, and there is a great argument for George Carlin, but personally, I think it's Ringo Starr all the way. It has to be him. And I stand by that the entire way. I will debate any one of you, um, uh, as to whether or not Ringo Starr, um, is the best Thomas narrator. Um... That being said, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Um, I got, I had fun with this. You know, it was fun going back and, and redoing a project with um, the knowledge that I've gained from my years uh, doing this and editing and filming and whatnot. Um, what's really fun, too, is kind of to think back, you know, when I started, I kind of jumped right in to things like ranking videos and, and uh, videos on the layout. I didn't really take the time to explore good editing techniques but now that i have those it's fun to go back and redo these projects and present them in a much better way akin to my liking so if you guys uh want to see more videos like this where i take older projects and kind of remake them uh let me know if you want to see different ranking videos i know the movie ranking thing has been done to death but i i wouldn't mind taking another swing at it or even just a singular movie review um so if you want to see any of that please let me know uh and thanks for watching see you in the next one guys